Well, as you wait, just as Pastor Cole said, your expectation should grow, not diminish. So as you wait on the Lord, you should get stronger in him. Um, we know that the Lord's return is very soon. Amen? You could see it by the signs. Um, but also we, we heard from scripture, Jesus is coming back soon. So how much sooner is now, now that we've waited so long, so to speak? And so the longer that you wait for a thing, the, the longer that you're waiting on the Lord, your expectation should actually be growing because you know you're actually closer to receiving that promise than you've ever been before. Romans 4.20 says this, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this, he brought glory to God. So Abraham, as he was getting older, it was actually becoming less and less possible in the natural for him to receive the promise that God had given to him. And so it looked worse and worse in the natural. And so as you're waiting on the Lord, as you're waiting for that miracle to come to pass, as you're waiting for that promise to be fulfilled in your life, you can actually, just like Abraham, our father in the faith, you can actually grow in expectation, not knowing, well, now it's less and less possible in the natural. No, now you're closer than you've ever been before. That's the viewpoint that we have to see our miracles in. Amen? You will not receive from God without believing. You won't receive unless you know what you can believe for. So why don't we ask ourselves this, this question for your own, own situation, for your own particular uh, circumstance. Maybe it's a prayer point. Maybe it's something that you've declared over your life for this coming season. Um, do you believe God for that particular thing in your life to change? And if you're not sure what to believe, why don't you take some time and actually find it in the word of God what it is that you can believe. If you haven't yet received an answer, do you know what to believe? And do you know what God says to believe? And do you actually believe him? Amen? Jesus asked the blind man, what is it that you want me to do for you? Um, it says in the Bible, you have not because you ask not. It also, Jesus also said, Ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be opened to you. And one of the things that we miss in our English language is what it actually is saying um, in the original language, keep asking and you'll receive. Keep seeking and you'll find. Keep knocking and the door will be opened to you. And there's that aspect of perseverance, there's that aspect of waiting um, that, that we miss in our English language, but it's there nonetheless. If you keep asking, you'll receive. If you keep on seeking, you'll find. If you keep on knocking, the door will be open to you. It shows that you really believe when you keep asking, when you keep seeking, when you keep knocking, when you don't give up, when you expect from him. It's actually our position to seek out an answer from the Lord. It's our privilege to seek out an answer from the Lord. It's in our authority in order, uh, we can declare a thing. The Bible says we could decree and declare a thing and it will be established. That we can actually come to the Lord knowing that God has already done it. And that we're just aligning ourselves up with the word of God. By his stripes we were healed, the Bible says. Um, Mark eleven twenty four 24 says this, I tell you, Jesus is speaking. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Everybody say this, my answer is on the way. So this Bible verse says, if you believe that you have received it, like past tense, then you will have it. And it makes no sense, like as far as mathematically and all of that, and tense-wise, if you believe that you have received it, you will have it. Um, but God doesn't speak to our minds. He speaks to our spirit. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And so these, some of the things in the Bible, just it doesn't make sense to our minds, but it can make sense in our spirit, and he's speaking to us, our spirit man, our spirit woman, so that we can hear from him. Our minds, I wrote this down, uh, our minds can dissect in a millisecond, every reason why God can't in the natural. And so that's why he doesn't speak to your mind. 
He speaks to your spirit because he wants to encourage you and uplift you and tell you, no, if you believe that you have received it, it will be yours. We have to go beyond the natural. We have to go beyond what we think. Uh, all of our five senses, I can never remember all five. I tried to do this at the youth group. I don't know why it's so hard for me to say it. You're, anyway, um, all of your five senses, God can go beyond all of that. Your mind can dissect all of the reasons why God can't, but our spirits can believe in him. We can put our trust and our hope in him. And God is not speaking to our minds. Uh, Hebrews eleven six says this, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Do you know that it actually pleases God to expect that we would expect something from him? That pleases him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And our faith is believing in him, believing that he is who he says he is. So if you're taking notes, the very first point, that was all introduction. The very first point about how we can know what to expect from God is his word. So number one, go ahead and write down the word of God. The word of God shows us everything that we can believe for. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the, word of God. the word of God. Knowing the word helps you to know what we can believe for. Knowing the word of God helps me to know what I can believe for. Do you believe what God says? Well, you might have a problem believing what God says if you don't know what he said. And so you can know by the word of God what you can believe about a thing. We need to take inventory of the word of God more than we take inventory, inventory of our circumstances. We need to find out what, what the Bible says about a thing more than we find out what the doctor says about a thing. Or more than what my bank account says about a thing. Um, more than what your financial advisor says about a thing. Um, if you had looked at your finances, if you had a lot of money in the stocks however long ago, you would have been in trouble. You would have felt bad and pulled all your money and, you know, been depressed or something. Uh, but there was a prophet that said, no, the end of the year is going to be glorious. And so if you look at your stock, stock now, you're probably doing much better than you were when it was horrible. All of that to say, don't listen to what uh, the natural speaks. Listen to what the word of God says. You'll prosper, whether the stock market crashes, uh, whether there's a dollar or not, you're going to prosper. Um, whether the doctor is giving you a, a terminal diagnosis or not, whatever the case may be, God has the final say. His word says we were healed by his stripes. And so you have to listen, take inventory of the word of God. See what the word of God says about a thing. And you don't have to be ignorant to all of the other things that are, you know, like, don't drive with one of the tires off of your car and just be like, well, the Lord said he would protect me. He commands his angels regarding me. Um, you don't have to be ignorant, but also you can know God's going to provide and, and put that into action, put that type of faith into action. Zechariah, Zechariah 9 verse 11 says this, because of the covenant I made with you, sealed with blood, I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless dungeon. Come back to the place of safety. You know, it's actually our safety to trust in the Lord. Come back to the place of safety, all you prisoners who still have hope. I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. We have a covenant sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ that we can have hope in him, that we can expect from him, that we can trust him to do those types of things in our lives that we weren't sure that anybody else could do. God can do those things because he's sealed this covenant with his blood. And just like Pastor Cole was saying, sometimes our answer doesn't come immediately. Sometimes it just doesn't just pop up. Um, one of the scriptures that just came to my mind as I was reading it in Genesis was how when, when the flood waters came to the earth, um, Moses was waiting to be able to, you know, for the ark to come to rest. And it says that the waters receded gradually. There was a gradual receding of the waters. Some things are gradual that God does. Some things are immediate. In fact, in, in I think it's in Matthew, one of the Gospels, um, there's only two times that a miracle that Jesus did wasn't immediate. So sometimes it's gradual, 
Sometimes it's immediate, but I can tell you this from the authority of the word of God, that there is an appointed time for you to receive the promise that he has for you. It's coming. Everybody say it's coming. It's on its way. It's already yours. It's just a matter of time before it manifests in the natural realm. Uh, you see it in Daniel. You mentioned it, Pastor Cole. Daniel prayed. One time he received it. Uh, I think the angel said, as soon as you started praying, I came. And so there was a couple, you know, more words of the prayer before the angel got to him. So you see that there's some time difference. And then another time when Daniel was praying, it was 21 days before he got his answer. But he got his answer, right? Both times he got his answer. One time it was almost immediately, and the other time it took three weeks, but he got the answer. The word of God will not ever return void. The Bible says, though it tarries, wait for it. I know it's talking about vision, but though it tarries, wait for it. Though, though you have not yet received what you're believing for, wait for it, because it is sure to come to pass. 1 Peter 2, 1 says this, the one who puts their trust in the Lord will not ever be put to shame. Another version says they'll never flee in haste. As you put your trust in the King of kings, in the Lord of lords, in the power of his word, he watches over his word in order to perform it. He honors his word above his name. So as you put your trust and your hope in him, you can be sure you will not ever have to flee last minute looking for help, flee in haste, looking for help from somebody else. If you put your full trust in the Lord, if you put all your eggs in that basket, he says in his word, you will not ever be put to shame. Now waiting, like you said, waiting alone doesn't receive just waiting. You can't just, you know, wait for your dinner to be done without having ever put the dinner in the oven. Um, you have to wait with expectancy. You have to actively wait in faith, knowing that he's about to do something in you. And as that Bible verse says, as you wait on the Lord, your strength will be renewed. Rather than coming to the Lord with every single thing that we have wrong, now that is part of our relationship with him. Um, he cares about us. And so he cares if we come to him and we're upset. Um, but that can't be all of the time. Rather than coming to him with just everything that's wrong, we should come to him like 1 John 5.14 says. This is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked for him. So we don't have to come to him crying and begging and pleading Though you can, I'm not saying that you can't cry to him, that like you should, he cares. Um, but what I'm saying is this word says we could come to him with confidence, knowing that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know if he hears us, then we have the answer to that request that we had. If it's in his word, I can have it. If it's in his word, you can have it. If you're... If you don't know what the will of God is for your particular situation, his will is his word. So you can actually know, according to this, what the Bible says, what his will is. I want to encourage you. You could join me. I'm going to be doing the 90-day um, read the Bible in 90 days challenge. The last time that I did it, I did it in like 180 days. I was thinking about adding a zero. I thought maybe that it was like, maybe they made a mistake and they meant 900 days. Um, but really, if you, if you get the word inside of you, you'll know what you can believe about a situation. And you can get enough of the word in you that you start to unbelieve what you're seeing with your eyes. Because what you see in your spirit is greater than what you see with your eyes. Amen? So go ahead and join me on that. The second point is you can know what, uh, what to expect from God based off of his nature or based off of his spirit. You can know what to expect from God based off of his nature. Go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 2 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. 
So we have the Spirit of God to tell us what God is even thinking. That's pretty serious. Then let's back it up a couple verses. Uh, verse 9 of that same chapter, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, I'm sure you've all heard, heard this, this verse, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. Everybody say, I can know what God has in store for me. This says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. We've all um, recited that scripture, but it says, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. Maybe your particular situation is not in the Bible. Maybe it's very unique. And there are some unique things that can happen in, in our lives. But you can know by his spirit, by his nature, what he's like and what he's bound to do for you. Amen? Um, the Bible talks about the unjust judge. There's a woman um, who's asking for her, her case to be answered. And she's knocking over and over again. And uh, Jesus is talking about the unjust judge and about how, man, even, even though he doesn't care, he's going to still get up and answer because she keeps on knocking. And how much more will our God carry about justice to us quickly, the Bible says. And that's because our God is good. He's a good God. Every good and perfect gift comes from a fa our Father above. The Bible says, who of you fathers will give a stone to your son who's asking for bread? Who of you fathers will give a snake to your son who's asking for a fish? How much more will your father who's in heaven give good gifts to those who ask from him? Why? Because that's his nature. That's what our God is like. Um, I was reading the Bible one day, and I got to thinking, um, it says in, I believe, yeah, it's Hebrews eleven nineteen. Abraham reasoned that God could raise Isaac back from the dead. Abraham so Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And we read that and go, yeah, like, it's all throughout the Bible. Um, but I got to thinking, had, that, had Abraham ever seen that before? And so I, I studied it, and here, Elijah was the first person to raise, that, that it's recorded in Scripture to raise somebody from the dead. Elijah came 1,200 years after Abraham. And so the first instance of somebody being raised from the dead was 1,200 years after Abraham already believed that God could do it. No eye had seen yet. No ear had heard about that yet. Whatever... Even if no eye has seen the answer to your problem, even if doctors would say, no, there's a 0% zero, zero survival rate, or no, I've never seen anybody come back from this before, even if no eye has seen it, even if no ear has heard it, even if no mind can comprehend it, amen, it is the nature of our God to do that thing for you because he loves you, amen? God so loved the world that he gave his son, his only begotten son. He loves us so much that he gave. Let me ask you this question. For How many of you guys have children? Um, so the kids, when they came out on Christmas Day, knowing you, whether you said that they were getting something or not, because, you know, some kids are bad, so you got to be like, you're getting nothing for Christmas. Whether you said whatever you said to them, they expected to open a gift, right? Yeah. Why? Because they know you. They know you. They know you love them. They know you care about them. And so they knew that they, they could expect a gift. They probably were looking for their name, which one was theirs. Now let's flip-flop it. What, how disappointed would you have been with them? If they came up to you and they were like, 
thank you so much. They, they hugged you. I love you. Thank you so much. But I don't want anything and walked away. And I'm not talking they came back five minutes later and was like, just kidding. I want to open the gifts. I'm saying they never come back to open the gift. Like, it's March. And you're like, will you please just open? I get that you love me. But will you please just open the gift? You would have been disappointed. And you probably would have been mad, too, because you got all these gifts. You worked hard. You wrapped them, all that stuff. All of that to say, God loves us so much that he gave. And he didn't just give us his son. He gave us the ability to have abundant life in every area of our lives, to have eternal life, everlasting life. And that starts when you get saved, but it doesn't end until you're going throughout all eternity, which it never ends. And so he wants us to have an abundant life full of his blessings. His Bible says, or the Bible says, I will fill your life with good things. Open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's time to start getting our hopes up. Amen? I want to encourage you today, get your hopes up, expect from God, based off of his word, based off of his nature, based off of what he's like. The Bible says, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, with boldness. And finally, you can know what to expect from God from experience, whether that's your experience or whether that's an experience of somebody else. Now, you should never see the word of God through your experience. You should always see your experience through the word of God. So that has to be at the very bottom of the list. But the Bible says that we can comfort each other based off of the comfort that we've received from God. And so I could be comforted knowing that you received an answer to something that I'm looking for. So that's why we testify. To build up each other's faith, to encourage one another in our faith, because you can be- I can now believe because I heard that God did it for you. Time and time again, you see in Scripture, people hear of what God did. People hear about what Jesus did, and they come running to him. So we can know based off of our experience, what did God do in your life in the past? Did he pull through for you? Did he heal you? Are you still standing? Did he provide for you that time that you were in college and you were putting all of your canned goods in the safe because you didn't have much money and you didn't want people to take your ramen? Um, Look at you now. And I'm just speaking from experience. Um, Look at you now. Did you make it? Did did God pull you through? That time that you felt like I'm not going to make it through this or I don't know how I'm going to make it through it. Here you are. Here you are. You made it. And you're going to continue to make it, just like the first song that we, I'm still standing. Yes, I am standing on the promises of Jesus. Because every promise in his word is yes, but we have to respond with a resounding amen. Meaning you have to agree with the promises of God. They don't work for you unless you agree with them. And you can't allow your hope to waver. You can't allow your expectation to waver because some time has passed. What a joy it brings to the heart of our Father if we believe him all the way through. If we really don't waver, if we don't doubt, if we're not tossed about like the waves on the sea, you can really trust God all the way through because of his word, because of his nature, and because you've seen him do it before. And if you haven't ever seen him to do, it, do it before, I can assure you, as soon as you put your trust in his word, you'll see him do it. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. The Bible says, forget not all of his benefits. We can truly remember the goodness of God, and that can help fuel us for receiving his next promise to us. We can continue to wait on him. The Bible says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on earth? He's going to absolutely pull through for you. Go ahead and close your eyes and bow your heads. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that there is no darkness in him at all. It also says that his ear is turned away from those who are sinners. And so I just want to share with you, there's there's one other possibility why you have not yet received. And it's because God's ear is not turned towards you to answer your prayer. 
until you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. His blood is what makes these promises possible. His shed blood is what make, makes these promises possible. And you need to believe in Jesus Christ first as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that you need to repent. That means turn away from your sin. And then you need to acknowledge Jesus before man. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here and you know, man, I know that my sin has separated me from God. And I have not ever asked his forgiveness or I've never repented from my sin. I've never turned away from my sin. But you're here today and you are hearing about the goodness of God. It says it is the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. So in hearing about his goodness, you want to turn to him and you want to be freed from your sin and you want to be heard by him. If that's you and you would say, I have not ever received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, or I've never repented, I've never truly turned away from my sin, but you want to turn to him today, I want you to lift your hand right where you're at. You would say, I know I've sinned against God, and I know I'm in need of a Savior. I don't see any hands here, but I'm going to pray for those of you who are online listening. If you need to receive Christ as your Savior, go ahead and repeat this prayer after me, but believe it from your heart. Dear Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. God, I believe that you raised him from the dead and he is alive right now to give me power over sin. I turn away from my old way of living and I turn towards you. Fill me now with your spirit that I would live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, God, we pray for each and every person who's here. For those of you who are here and those of you who are online, go ahead and lift your hands to heaven. We bless you, God. And we thank you that you have been true to your word. You have not ever failed me. You've always been faithful. You've always been loyal. There's not one point in your word that you have failed me and you will not ever fail me. I thank you God that I have an expectation of you, that I can expect something from you because you sent your son Jesus to die for me that I would have abundant life. You don't want me just making it. You don't want me, so to speak, just sliding into home plate, all tattered and torn. But you're coming back for a spotless bride, without spot, without blemish. And we are your bride, and you make it possible for us to expect from you and to walk in those fulfilled promises. I thank you, Father God, that every person who's in this place, who has been waiting for a promise to be fulfilled in their lives, I thank you that you would encourage them now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Though it tarries, wait for it. There is an appointed time that our answer is on its way, that you've already done it in the spiritual. It's already done by the power of your blood. And we believe that we have already received it. And because we've already received it in the spirit, we will have it in the natural. And we declare that this year will be our year of miracles, signs, and wonders. Seeing your word come to pass. And also, God, that we will know that when we come into your presence, whether it's on a Sunday, a Wednesday, or every day when we're on our faces before you, thanking you of your goodness, that we can expect something from you because you love us so much that you gave and you've never stopped giving. In Jesus' mighty name, if you believe your life is turning around, go ahead and shout amen.